All right, well, first up, we have uh, R.C. Johnson. I worked with R.C. at uh, National Instruments and then at Bizarre Voice. Uh, he sometimes knows what's going on, so listen. That's probably not true, but I think they wanted to get this get started on a, on a high note today, so I'm going to start some fires. Uh, I'm a developer uh, and a manager at engineering teams, and I'm going to talk about running engineering teams with little to no operations support. So uh, a little bit of background on me. I've been at uh, WP Engine, Bizarre Voice, uh, a little startup here in town called Lawn Starter. And uh, for the last couple of years, I've been in, in strapped teams where we didn't have a ton of operations support, and yet we had a ton of scale. And so I want to talk a little bit about what our successes were, uh, a couple of different example applications. I've got three uh, to talk about where we've been successful. But first, I want to talk about the concept of pre-cloud software. I think a lot of times when I'm talking to folks that are new to the industry, they don't understand that some pieces of software just aren't made to run on commodity hardware um, and, and, and aren't used to the fact that it's commoditized operating systems. And so you just start cloning it and making lots of copies of it. And this has worked well for us in the past, but you, know, you look at that picture and you think, man, there's got to be a better way to do this. And the truth is, is I think that actually a lot of technology is coming that is making it much, much easier to take one of these things and just basically blow it up, shoot it into space, and take operations and take components of it and make it uh, just a complete service that snaps in to your organization that makes building and running and scaling applications that much easier. So like I said, I've got three applications I want to talk about. The first was a Ruby on Rails application that we had at WP Engine uh, that ran on Heroku. And if, if, you, if you haven't used Heroku, you know everything at Heroku is a service that you can just add on. It's literally just a toggle that you can add on. And so we were using log monitoring as a service. We had the database was a separate service. Uh, you know, we had uh, our, our horizontal scaling through Hire Fire was a service that we just turned on a little bit of minimal configuration. Now, do they control security? Yeah, they take care of security for you. They take care of a good number of things. They're not, they do not have everything there for you. They're not going to have a, a turnkey solution for every single thing in operations, but they have a ton, and it made it really easy for a very small, very nimble engineering team to develop an application that tens of thousands of users were using on a daily basis. The second example within in this kind of is uh, the deploy to Heroku button. If you guys haven't seen this, you can take any open source project and, and, and with a little bit of configuration, add a deploy to Heroku button to the GitHub page. Uh, at Lawn Starter, we needed to do uh, something to track how, uh, how many op uh, email opens and email deliveries we were getting through SendGrid. There was an open source project that had the deploy to Heroku button and in $10 and 10 minutes, I had uh, that application up and deployed inside of our infrastructure and monitoring our email open rates, which was <coughs> awesome. The second example is actually the applications we did at Lawn Starter. They were all written in PHP using the Laravel MVC framework. And the creator of Laravel went so far as to create this entire life cycle. So you go from PHP and Laravel, and, and it's not lost to me that PHP ends up as the monkey here, just so we're clear. Uh, but you go, from, you go from an MVC framework up into Homestead, which is their vagrant solution so that you can have a, a local setup. And then you can go up into Forge, uh, which is a single server deploy, and then in Voyeur, which is clustered deploys. And it's all turnkey. It all knows how your application is structured. It doesn't provide you everything. It doesn't give you monitoring. It doesn't give you uh, a number of things. It doesn't give you anything on security. It does do configuration management for you for your server. So you've got to bring your own on security. You've got to bring your own patching process. But in terms of a very small, lightweight, nimble team able to do some baseline operations and some baseline scale, we were able to do it. And the final example I've got is actually using AWS Lambda and AWS Web API, uh, API Gateway. Uh, I actually haven't done this yet. This is something that I've been toying with, uh, just I haven't done it in production yet. Uh, but the idea of deploying separate microservice functions, each one as a separate Lambda function, and then putting the API gateway in front of it. I know there are some teams here in town and elsewhere that are doing this and being really, really successful with it. It's a really interesting concept because the code is forced to be separate. The code is forced to be versioned as you deploy new copies of it out there. So it forces some good behaviors in a microservices world uh, that I think are really interesting. And then lastly, you're only paying for what you get, right? So you, you know, you, depending upon the quality that you build uh, and depending upon what you need, you can pay as little as, what, as wh what your API is getting used. So it's really interesting to kind of control the costs, 
um, and build in a very modular fashion. So I'm not up here to ring the bell that DevOps is dead. Uh, I think that DevOps is a really useful thing. I think anything that breaks down the walls between development uh, and engineering and operations and gets those teams working together uh, where our engineers are doing more operations and our operations folks are doing more engineering, I think is absolutely good stuff. I'm gonna put a longer post up on my blog, which is onlynewmistakes.com if anybody's interested. And uh, you know, shout at me on Twitter, it's at RC Johnson.